Do you ever feel like visual effects in old movies were better? What if I told you that wasn't just nostalgia speaking? Back in the 1960s, Disney invented a technology that was in many ways superior to the green screen. But that tech has long since been forgotten. And what if I told you that we found a way to recreate it? Being able to layer one moving image over another is the fundamental building block of visual effects. Every single crazy effect shot from every movie you love relies on this basic core technique. And the primary way we do that is with green screen or blue screen. But there are lots of problems with green screen, even in this modern era. You can't film blurry or transparent things. You can't wear clothes that are the same color as the screen. And the spill of the color oftentimes ruins footage. If I want to make a movie about a clown wearing all the colors of the rainbow getting married on Mars, I can't, and that bothers me. If I could get my hands on an invention that didn't have any of these issues, it would be like a filmmaking superpower. It would be like magic. Do you really think so? What's special about that hat? It's transparent. It's transparent. It's transparent. <laughs> I thought the stuff I was seeing on screen was impossible. They're keying a veil. They're keying salt. Smoke. They're even wearing blue and green clothes. This movie from 1964 broke every rule of chroma keying, and they did it all without computers. So how do they do it? To explain the science behind the magic, we are joined by Dr. Paul Debevic. The sodium vapor process. Instead of a blue screen or a green screen, they used what was sometimes called a yellow screen. It was a very specific spectrum of yellow made from a low pressure sodium vapor light that puts out one wavelength of light at 589 nanometers. Because it's just one wavelength and because of how dichroic filters work, you can actually block just that one wavelength or let just that one wavelength go through. So the magic of the sodium vapor process is they used a beam splitter prism so that the light that comes through the lens gets split onto two strips of film at the same time. The sodium vapor wavelength of 589 nanometers reflects out this way and all the rest of the spectrum goes through and can expose a color image of the actor. And that's exactly what you need to get your map. What's kind of magical about it is that you can block that one wavelength of yellow without messing up all of the other colors. In that scene, there's no matte lines. He's motion blurring, he's dancing around. The compositing is impeccable. Yeah, it's perfect. You couldn't have gotten such great blur over the alpha channel with a green screen or a blue screen. It seems too good to be true. Why are we not still using this technology today? Yeah, really, what gives? Because they were never able to replicate the prism. What? <laughs> I've read that Disney was only able to produce one prism. Is that true? They had to join two pieces of glass and then have layers of material with different industries of refraction, it's a very custom job, and it would probably cost tens of thousands of dollars at a minimum. Apparently there were three of these ever made, and also we don't know where any of these prisms are today. <laughs> <laughs> and that means that I'm never going to get to answer this burning question I have. Is sodium vapor better than green screen? The science, the physics, they all tell me it is. But because the prisms have been lost to time, I'm never going to get to realize my dream of a clown getting married on Mars. And then one day, I got a message from Paul DeBevic. He had done what I thought was impossible. He had recreated Disney's magic prism, and he needed somebody to test it out. This will be the first test of the sodium vapor process in over 30 years. Well, I guess this is like our hello world of sodium vapor matting. We've got there a color is. image and our sodium vapor image there. There it is. Look at that. That's the idea. It's working. The first thing you need are some sodium vapor lights. So thankfully, they still make the bulbs. Eventually, after we've had these on for 10 minutes, they'll start glowing that color. I think it's working. And then we've got a couple of LED lights here that are going to illuminate the actor. Sodium vapor mats. Woohoo! Hey. Pretty sweet. How is this working? How did Paul DeBevic manage to resurrect Disney's lost prism? Well, with a deep understanding of the science of light and a little bit of creativity. I'll do a beam splitter, but I'll just do a regular beam splitter like this beam splitter, and then we'll filter the light after it comes out of the prism. Paul recreated the physics of the sodium vapor process, but he did it with all off-the-shelf components. Instead of a custom beam splitter, he used two filters. And instead of two strips of film, he just used two cameras. Now, if you ever think your rigs are janky, they're all janky. <laughs> For the first time ever, my dreams are within my grasp. Want to know what's within your grasp? A beautifully designed website, thanks to our sponsor Squarespace. Whether you're an artist, an entrepreneur, or dreaming of starting something new, Squarespace is your canvas. Building a unique online presence has never been easier, thanks to Squarespace Blueprint, their new guided design system that lets you choose layout and styling options tailored to your business. And thanks to their optimized SEO tools, you'll show up in more searches and get discovered fast. 
Good luck to whoever's going to key this footage. Offer your customers a seamless checkout that accepts credit cards, PayPal, Apple Pay, and ineligible countries after paying ClearPay. There's no way this is gonna get chroma keyed. With Squarespace's Fluid Engine, creativity knows no bounds. Start with a template and then make it entirely yours. Drag, drop, and design your heart out on any device. So what's stopping you? Head to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you are ready to launch, visit squarespace.com slash crew to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. With squarespace.com, your dream is just a click away. All right, now let's find out what I'm going to do with all these hard to key clothes. Paul, I would like to tell you about this character. Every time I approach a production company with it, they're like, no, can't do it, it's impossible. Okay. And it's a story about a clown that's trying to get married. <laughs> you look so dumb. You me? What? Look, I've heard big things about this magic crystal, okay? But this is ridiculous. That's impossible to key. Look at that. I hate to break it to you, but this video is gonna be a disappointment. JC, uh, I feel free to come on out. It's my wedding day. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that would be difficult to key, wouldn't it? It would. I forgot to mention that uh, the clown's getting married on Mars, hence the need to replace the background. Oh, of course, yeah. I think this is gonna be fantastic. Now I suppose we should uh, clean up the lighting. <laughs> yeah, kill all of the full spectrum lighting. We need that one covered. Yeah. I need to cover one of the skylights so that we don't have all this like daylight spill coming in. It's And my dress is like Marilyn monroe right now. Keep this side down. It's the best the clown can do. So as you can see right now, we're spending a lot of time getting these flags up because what we don't want to have happen is we don't want the sodium vapor light to be hitting JC at all because then it's going to be basically turning her transparent. So this is a spectral light meter and it tells you the spectrum of the light. For example, this light here, that shows it's LED light that's made out of red, green, and blue LEDs to make the color white. And I can also take it and put it in front of the sodium vapor lights. There is our sodium vapor spike <laughs> at 589 nanometers. So let's see if there's any sodium vapor light hitting our subject. Mostly good, but if I look closely here, I can see a tiny little blip. See that tiny little blip of sodium vapor? Yeah. Science. We're very close, but we're getting a little bit of side spill on her, and we're just cleaning that up here. If we're the first ones to do this in like 30 years, I want to do it right, you know? It went down. Nice. That should be better. Looks like we almost have a perfect mat. I guess the only thing left to do is to shoot it. Maybe we should shoot. Cool. Go ahead and roll the cameras. Okay. Here we are on Mars. The clown is looking for the groom. Uh-oh, there's aliens behind you. Maybe turn around, wave at the aliens. <laughs> I'm gonna get one shot of myself as well. Wearing my green hoodie, which I refuse to take off. And hopefully the sodium vapor process lets us do something. Nico, I wanna see you do some head banging. I want you to oh. throw that head around. <laughs> I think we got it. That would be the hardest green screen shot. That would be so hard to do on a green screen. And cut. Right. Dude, this is gonna be as successful as Mary Poppins. Oh my God, wow. Paul's research has been super influential on me. To get to work with him on an experiment is super, super cool. I hope this works. All right, let's take a look at what we got. Here's what our color footage looks like. And if I look at the sodium vapor shot, wow, it looks pretty good. Let's see what happens if I take that and turn it into a black and white transparency mask. Wow. This should work really well. But before I try pulling a transparency key here, I need to also try this with green screen to do a true comparison to know if this is better. I'm using all the tricks for perfect green screen that I've acquired over the years. Lights with a hint of green on them. Lights on Jordan with a hint of magenta to cancel out the green spill from the green screen. I'm going to do my best to light this green screen and shoot it as good as I can. All right, hi, you're on Mars. Wave to us, the audience. So we all know that sodium vapor should give scientifically better results. But green screen tools have had years and years and years to mature. I can start pulling in the thickness of that mat but while the dress starts to come back the veil now has these ugly lines so I can try to you know close the holes in the dress using a different tool here but it patches up the holes in the veil there's just no way to handle the range of greens here and for green screen tools to know what we want to keep and what we don't want to keep oh no yuck destroy you actually not that bad be honest did you do your best with the key I did the issue is, is I can't get the transparency of the veil and like the slightly off green dress. In fact, the only way you could do a shot like this is to go in and cut out all these different sections by hand and have a bunch of patchwork different solutions in the image. If the sodium vapor process is superior, it won't have any of these issues. All right, so it's time to try the sodium vapor process, do the composite and see if it works. Here we have JC and here we have our background, right? And the way we're going to do this actually mirrors the way they did it on film back in the day. So the thing is, if you just take two pieces of film and you layer them over each other, you end up with a double exposure. You need something called a holdout mat that leaves a hole for you to simply add your other image on top. So we're gonna take our background and we're gonna subtract the mat. And we're gonna take our foreground and we're gonna subtract everything that isn't the mat. Now we take our background and our foreground and we simply add them together. 
Honestly, I'm really excited to see this because it felt like we were doing one of the coolest, most high-tech things we've ever done. And I would love for this to pay off. Here are the results, and I'll let you guys be the judge. Whoa! Wow! That's wild! Dude, it's wow. Mary Poppins! This is amazing! It's incredible. Oh, no, oh. you dog! Water! <laughs> He's drinking water on Mars! <laughs> this is my favorite one. The water is just such a flex. <laughs> Check out the motion blur. Oh, the hands, oh! Wow! The motion blur drops the color exposure correctly oh, on the background right there. It turns it red. Oh, correct math. Oh my god, it's so good. Dude, those little tiny hairs on top? Oh my yes. god. And I didn't have to do any work. You didn't have to tweak your like white clip, black no, clip. No, I hate that shit. D spill bias? No, there's no spill. What about your edge feather? No edge Feather. No D spill, no messing with gamma of your mat, no thresholds, no restoring fringe, no cleaning the blacks, no cleaning the whites, nothing. Just turn it on. Just turn it on. Wow. Good job, good job. <laughs> that is amazing. I'm very popular, y'all. So I just got the opinion of everybody at Corridor, but I need to get the opinion that actually really matters. Oh, wow. You're zooming in on it. You are not afraid of your mat lines. That was clearly <laughs> exactly what needed to be filmed to show off this technique. Exactly. What about a volume? Couldn't you use a volume? In today's age, when you can just go and shoot on a volume with an LED screen, is sodium vapor worth pursuing? In practice, a lot of those in-camera backgrounds will get replaced. So it seems like we're still in a world where we need to be able to cut out backgrounds and put people on new things. Yeah, yeah. flexibility in post-production is incredibly valuable. One thing that you're noticing is like compositing tools are getting better because they're starting to have a bit of machine learning inside of them. Machine learning needs training data. The question is, where do you get all that training data? There is no perfect, easy compositing technique. And I thought this would be a good way to do it. So sodium vapor is another one of those essential steps in this progress towards having perfect transparency for compositing and visual effects then? Absolutely. It is the gold standard, the yellow standard. <laughs> <laughs> well, Paul, thank you once again for joining us here on the Corridor channel. If you like these deep dives into classic visual effects technology, along with industry experts talking about it, you'll definitely love our Abyss video, so go check that out. And uh, yeah, thank you. I really appreciate it. Great to see you. Glad you came yeah. on. This was fun. This is a great time. Totally. <laughs> totally.